Why does the message of Jesus matter now that I'm a believer? Why should the mission of God matter to me? Does being a member of the family of God really matter? Answer to these questions and more will be explored in today's episode of Word Search with me, Christopher Dryden, where we're exploring episode 10, Reflections on Being in Form through the book of Acts chapters 3 and 4. Word Search is a place to search God's word and a time for God's word to search us. We encourage godly character development through stimulating seeking God's kingdom first and his righteousness, trusting him that doing so will inform and transform both our prayers and our practice. For here at Word Search, we believe it is to find treasure in God's word so that we can truly be not just hearers, but doers of his word for his glory. Today on Word Search, what we'll be exploring is reminding ourselves of the premise of what it is to be informed in terms of being a member, a minister, a messenger, and a missionary, and then review that through the lens of Acts chapters 3 and 4, where we consider the context, the content, the concepts, and conclusions that we get from that. At the end of this session today, we'll also have some prayer points uh, to consider. First of all, it's important to remind ourselves of the premise of what it is to be in form. That premise is the basis on which I have been exploring Acts chapters 3 and 4 in the knowledge that every believer, every disciple, every follower of Jesus Christ is a member of the family of God. And they're also a member of the body of Christ. As well as that, they are a minister of the Lord Jesus They are a messenger of the good news of the king, and they are a missionary of the kingdom of God. It's my contention that it's good to know what you've let yourself in for when you became, what, born again through the process of repenting from your sins, believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, being baptized in his name, and then receiving his Holy Spirit. So that now in that position, just like an athlete or a soldier, you need to stay fit. And to do that, every believer needs to stay in form by remembering what the four M's are, as in what it is to be in form. That's been the premise of the studies for the last few episodes. Now, on that basis, I want us to consider the context that is seen uh, in Acts chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. So Acts chapter 1 Verses 1 to 11 really plays a crucial role in allowing the context of this to be established. And that says as follows. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proofs appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, Will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes, and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. May God give us a blessing as his word has been read, 
and as we hear his word being read, that we may have an understanding of why this section of scripture is so important for us to understand who we are called to be in the light of who God called the apostles to be all that time ago. God bless us with the understanding of your word as we look to you and give you thanks. So from that particular scripture, that helps to paint the picture of the context of what's going on in Acts chapters 3 and 4. How it helps to outline who we are called to be as members, ministers, messengers and missionaries. The first thing to consider in the context is the sense that Jesus was sent by the Father on a mission. So Acts chapter 1 continuing from the entire gospel according to Luke, established that Jesus was sent by the Father on a mission. The mission was for him to go to the cross to take away the sins of man and also to recover for the Father, reconciling right relationship between man and God. Jesus was on a mission, sent by the Father. Not just that, but what we see clearly here as well in Acts chapter 1 is that the apostles also are sent on a mission. As Jesus would say in another gospel, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. This was something that he had informed his disciples of quite some time into his ministry so that they are aware that as he has been sent, so they are sent. So here in this particular chapter that we see in Acts chapter 1, the apostles recognize that they too have been sent on a mission by Jesus. But it's not just specifically for the apostles, it's also an indication of how the church has been sent on a mission. It's seen in the apostolic example, but it extends to everyone who becomes a believer because they are too becoming disciples, followers of Jesus. And because they're being made followers of Jesus, they follow the example that Jesus has set. And that example that's been set by the apostles reminds us that the mission is always centered on Jesus and it is full of acts of service. So even as Jesus went about doing good, so the apostles realized that it wasn't just about what they said, but what they demonstrated about the rule of God in action. Thus, with those acts of service being done by those sent by God, not only are they sent on a mission, that is that they're missionaries, but they're also sent to be servants. So if you are on a service as a servant, another word for a servant is a minister, thus in this way, those who were called to follow the example of Jesus are called to be ministers. As well as sharing the service of Christ in the good deeds, it was crucial then that being witnesses of the Lord Jesus Christ, they had a message to share. They had a message to share of what they had witnessed. And what they had witnessed was the realization of the good news of Jesus Christ. So that mission included sharing the good news message as they went along. Thus, the mission was that the Father sent the Son to make sons of the kingdom. So the Father sent the Son not just to make followers, but to invite people to become members of the family of God that realized the fullness of the mission of God that was to reconcile man back to God so that there was no longer a situation where there was enmity, where there was a distance, where there was a gap and a divide between God and man. But now not only can man have a right relationship with God, but that relationship is summed up in likewise being children of God, even as Jesus is the son of God. And as sons of God, then you're also servants of the Lord. And as servants of the Lord, you are sent to serve and you serve indeed as well as in sharing the message of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thus, the whole context you can see uh, is about being a member, a minister, a messenger, and a missionary. What we've been studying over the past few episodes is how that has been expressed in Acts chapter 3 and 4 in particular. And the content that we went through took us from the encounter at the start to the community in action at the end. But going through that bit by bit to expand on that we had initially seen how Peter and John served the need that they saw in the name of Jesus that is to say that they saw this man this man who was begging and he was lame he was called a somebody who was crippled and they saw the need that he had and even though he thought that what he needed was some money from them they saw an opportunity to serve him where he really needed to be served and in the name of Jesus they were able to bring about great healing 
And that gave an opportunity for the gospel to be declared. So the response to the man being healed by all of those who watched in amazement as he went along gave Peter the opportunity, filled with the Holy Spirit, to be able to declare the good news of Jesus Christ. And as a result of that message, that gave an opportunity for people to become members of the body of Christ by what? Repenting of their sins, accepting the Lord Jesus Christ, being baptized in his name, and then receiving the same Holy Spirit that these two men were able to use and exercise and employ in service of the king. Not only did the message, however, give an opportunity for a good response, it also conjured up the negative reaction from those in opposition to the disciples. Just as they opposed Jesus, so they saw the disciples of Jesus as a threat. But even that opposition gave another opportunity for the message of the Lord Jesus Christ to come about. And so as a result of the opposition, that gave an opportunity for the members to get involved as well. And the way that they got in on it was through prayer. And we saw that the importance of the power of prayer as the members heard what was going on in the lives of the ministers. And not only did that give the opportunity for the members to get in on it through praying, that prayer was to enable them and embolden them to continue to share the message and continue to see God move with signs and wonders by his mighty hand that would reinforce that message of the mission of the Lord Jesus Christ. And not only was there that prayer, but there was also the opportunity for members to show what it was to be the community of the Holy Spirit through acts of kindness and generosity and service, not just to those outside the community, but particularly to those within that community, so that being a member of the body of Christ and being a member of the family of God meant that you were spirit-filled to look out for the needs of those within the family, whatever it took. All of that to say that what we see in Acts chapter 3 and 4 is a microcosm, it's a small world of the mission at work. The mission is about ministers seeing an opportunity to serve and then seeing an opportunity to exercise their role as a messenger, to share the good news of Jesus and then declare what the mission of God was always about in terms of allowing members to come into the family of God and then express what the community of the Spirit is all about, even in the light of opposition to the message. So that's that's a good microcosm of who we're called to be as members, ministers, messengers and missionaries. So there's that element in terms of the content, but let's have an overview of some of the concepts that have been running through Acts chapter 3 and 4 that reminds us as to who we are to be in form. So the first key concept that we see is that if you abide in Christ, you'll look to be more like him. When those who opposed Peter and John wanted to bring their message to an end they noted carefully the response that peter and john had given and they remembered that these people had clearly abided in christ they had stuck around and knocked about with jesus and in the light of that likewise those who stick with jesus will want to do the things of jesus so it's no wonder then if we accept the fact that you have to abide in christ to be like him that the name of jesus is so important when it comes to the way that the apostles are expressing their mission. So the name of Jesus isn't just a tagline to use to get what they want to get done. It's actually the authority by which they understand they are to operate. So the name of Jesus, expressing and operating in the power of the name of Jesus. It's something that Peter refers to uh, when they are healing the man at the beautiful gate. It's crucial at that point. It's also crucial in terms of them saying that there is salvation in no other name because there is no other name given under heaven by which men can be saved. The name of Jesus in its running is so crucial. And this again links into what Jesus had informed the disciples in his last in, uh, dialogue with them. As we see in John chapters 13 to 16, how crucial it is that the disciples should get into the rhythm and understanding of what they buy into when they come under his covering as their Lord and as their Savior. It now gives them the permission to operate in the power and the authority of his name. So the name of Jesus is essential. And as well as that, the role of the Holy Spirit is fundamental to all of the activities that they do. 
So Peter is only able to conduct what he does and say what he says in the power of the Spirit. This man who was filled with the Spirit of Pentecost still experiences an infilling to be able to communicate with boldness what he needs to express before the rulers as they interrogate him and John. Likewise, the role of the Holy Spirit is essential to how the spreading of the gospel and the demonstration of the signs and wonders and healings is so crucial in the power of the Holy Spirit. It is fundamental. And that boldness that the Holy Spirit gives them is to reveal and express and declare the gospel of Jesus. That is paramount. It can't be underestimated how crucial it is that it's not just about show, it's not just about demonstrations and performances, it's all about underpinning what does the rule of Jesus look like and why the good news of Jesus is so essential. So important is this message that it demands a response of one sort or the other. That's a key concept that the disciples are working under. There's no surprise then when opposition comes because that's what expecting likewise it's no surprise when there is a response in terms of people giving their lives because the gospel demands that kind of response being an effective minister an effective messenger and an effective missionary requires prayer prayer is pivotal to being productive it can't be underestimated the role that prayer plays as we see highlighted in this section as well it's a key concept that's why jesus taught his disciples to pray they understood the ongoing communication with the father was going to be critical if they were going to get the responses and the outcomes that they were believing god for the final concept for us to consider is how being on mission is about us together as well as what we do in the outside world about us within as well as what we do outside Jesus made clear that they would know that we're his disciples by the love that we had one for another. So it was so crucial that the role of the Holy Spirit in the life of the community of the Spirit declared that love of God in action. People selling their goods, people not seeing their stuff as their own, but belonging to the communal whole so that there wouldn't be a case of anyone being in need. That's the work of the Holy Spirit in operation. And that's the expression of the rule of God. That's the expression of the mission in action in that community. So that we realize that it's as much about who we are together as it is about what we do to those who are yet to become members of that family. So those concepts are things that we've explored over the series that we've been looking at these particular episodes. And as we've considered these concepts, it leads us to certain key conclusions in the light of the exploration that we've had. First of all, what matters to God should matter to us and it's quite clear that the mission and the message of God matter a lot to him so if it matters to him it really should matter to us it's not something that we can afford to think to ourselves oh well we'll leave it to somebody else to do it because you need to be gifted or you have to be a certain type of person to be able to do these things as a follower of Jesus Christ the message of the good news of Jesus has to matter to you and the mission of the establishment of the kingdom of God has to matter to you because it clearly matters to God. And when you think about what's in the message of the gospel, who we were before God, what Christ has come to do and fulfill, what the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus does for us, there's so much to consider in the message that there's no way that we can just limit it to a nice little package as though that will explain everything. But there's enough for us to invite people to find out more about who this great redeemer is, this great rescuer, this great King Jesus. And so that message informs us as to who we are as members when we become children of God, that's key. And the message instructs us as to how we are as ministers in terms of how do we serve, who do we serve and what do we serve for. And there's also the element in which the message indicates what we do on mission. So when we consider those key factors about how it informs, instructs and indicates who we are as members, what we do as ministers and where we go on mission, the message is crucial to all of that. And the mission reminds us that all of us are included in it, all of us who call ourselves members of the body of Christ. So it's not just the Peter and John show that we're seeing in Acts chapters 3 and 4, it's as much about how the members of the body of Christ work together and operate together to get the job done. Those aspects are things that have been highlighted in our explanation of what it is to be in form, 
in the light of what we see in Acts chapters 3 and 4. In the light of that then there are certain things that I'd love us to pray for and remember in prayer. First of all as ever it's crucial that we praise God for his message and his mission. That's something worth praising him for. It centers around him and how important he is so we should praise God for that. Spend some time doing that and as we praise him we should thank God that he has given us his son Jesus Christ and his Holy Spirit to be in us and with us to bring us ever closer into a relationship with him to know who he is and as we thank him we can ask God for that closer walk with him for that closer intimate relationship with him so that we are more minded of the things that matter to him than the things of the world that we are minded to be more on mission mentality than we are on a world mentality being cumbered with cares and the worries and the stresses and strains of the world around us. We can ask God for that closer relationship that should get us to seek God for opportunities both to serve others in our ministry, to fulfill the mission that God has for us, as well as to share the message of who Jesus is in the hope that more people will become members of the body of Christ and the family of God. And then as we seek him, as we thank him, and as we ask him, we can celebrate God, that he rules, by his spirit for his great name's sake so those are certain prayer points i want us to bear in mind always reminding ourselves that as people of the kingdom of god kingdom people apply kingdom practices in kingdom pursuits for kingdom purposes so next time on word search with me christopher dryden it'll be episode 11 god's fit body plan You'll be scratching your head and wondering what's that all about and the only way you'll discover is to find out in our next episode here on Word Search with me, Christopher Dryden, God's Fit Body Plan. That's what we'll be exploring together. In the meantime, please remember to like this episode and share it with those that you love and care for and your enemies as well. And subscribe to the channel, turning those notifications on so that you are alerted to future episodes of word search if you wish to support the channel if you wish to support word search itself please check the details in the description below and you'll be given contact information on how you can do that all support is welcome but more than anything else we're just keen that you should apply that which you learn in the word as we teach it from time to time it's crucial that we're not just hearers but we're putting it into action as well but thank you so much for taking your time to be with us here on Word Search as ever. If you're interested in the playlist of everything that's happened in this series about what it is to be informed through Acts chapter 3 and 4, you can check the playlist on the description above or in a box below. And there's also a way that you can subscribe to the channel just by clicking on the information on your screen. In the meantime, though, please remember that we're here on Word Search to find treasure in the Word of God so that we can be hearers and doers of that word for his honor for his glory for his namesake until next time on word search shalom